Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project, the best bantering radio <laughs> show on the network. <laughs> <laughs> to all the people everywhere who like bantering, mm-hmm. we welcome you. Yes, we welcome. do. Welcome. You look good today. Thank you. It's <laughs> Monday. Are mm-hmm. you feeling good? We're five weeks in. About four weeks. You mm-hmm. feel good? I feel you good. feel good about the whole year? Yeah. Have you been reading your Bible? I have been. Every day, zero excuse. Right. Ready to go? Disney World. At the Let's end of the go. year. Because we're trying to get these chickadees to go to Disney World. Yes. You know what the problem is? What? Everybody's wanting to go now. <laughs> right? right? Right. Everybody. I'm yes. getting, I'm getting everybody. They're like, I, dude, we're going with you. What, what if what we, we just do? take everyone that is a part of the Bible Reading Project on a Disney cruise? We just pack out, everybody packs out the cruise ship. I like that. That'd be fun. That would be real fun. Like, I mean, everybody. Everybody. If watching. you're a follower. Yeah. Let's see. I think we've got like 197 followers. Yeah. Hang on. I'm going to get there. So just a minute. And so if you read your Bible every single day, the excuse, we're going to go on a Disney cruise at the end of the year. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that if we do that, the girls are going to be really ticked. Why? Because they want to go to Disney, Disney. Oh. But we could take them. Right. And then still offer a Bible reading cruise yeah, Bible every reading year. Cruises. 159 followers. <laughs> probably 100 of them are fake. 59. I bet right. we could get 60 people to go on a cruise. I'm not an admin person. Could you admin that if we did a Bible reading cruise? Yeah, you could, could admin the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Because you did an incredible summer camp. And thank you. I was proud of you. I Thanks. think we could, man. Would that be not fun? Be Read fun. your Bible every single day. Zero suits. Summer cruise. Yeah. Right? (laughs) And then the whole cruise, we could just banter and read the Bible. (laughs) Right? Yes. Banter and read the Bible. We could have bantering sessions where people could just sit on the boat and banter with us. Banter about anything. (laughs) Are you good to banter about anything? Oh, pretty much about anything. So you could banter about aliens, flat earth, Mm -hmm. definitely politics. Oh, yeah. Because you're tense on that, man. And then definitely could not banter about the Bible because you blew every question we ask about the Bible. Come on. I know. Even today, Nessa at lunch, she was like, yeah, they were pretty hard. What? Pastor Mark. Y'all are Bible school. Ask me any question right now from the Bible. Any question. Pastor Mark was like, she said, Pastor Mark needs to go a little easier. So what? Like how many books are in the Bible? That kind of easy? Yeah. Okay, but you're both Bible school graduates, and you want easy first grade <laughs> I don't know about questions. like Bible school graduate. You both have degrees from a no, Bible school. I don't school. have a degree. Oh, so you dropped out. I have a certificate. Oh, that's okay. Well, Nessa has a degree. Well, well y'all, a certificate and degree together should have been able to get one of yeah. the ten. Y'all got none. Yeah, I'm not quite on Nessa's But you know level. what? Because we're givers on the Bible reading project, guess what? What? Moi did. I gave Miss Barb, who was the loser winner, <laughs> a bag of Black Rifle coffee anyway. Yeah. So shout out to Barb, Aunt Barb. Man, we, we <laughs> took good care of her. And this Thursday, oh, buckle up. Oh, yeah. Prize is awesome. Okay. And I'm going to start pondering the cruise idea. You'll go this week. Okay. All right? Yeah. You go ahead and get all the cost yeah. and get where we would go, the cruise ship we would go on, and we will buy. I'm liking it. Like Perry Stone, you know, he mm-hmm. does a cruise. Mm-hmm. Like, Gaither Trio does a cruise. <laughs> right, right. Right. Bible reading cruise, man. Yeah. And then it could become a thing. Yeah. Like, oh, you going on the Bible reading cruise, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and it, read your Bible every single day and then bantering. I think just a week of bantering on a boat yeah. would be incredible. And maybe like in the evenings, you could do like blues, a blues. I could jam. do blues. I could do blues jam. I could bring my whole blues band mm-hmm. and we could blues jam. And then um, at one point during the cruise, we could do me and you and Joey and others, okay. maybe Chris Redmond, David Thaxton. Yeah. We could do a belly flop contest. And then preaching because all that they would want to preach. Yeah, right. So uh, real question. We we highlighted her last <laughs> day. Did she yeah. get mad at you at all? Uh, she hasn't called me yet. She hasn't even called you yet. So I hope she's watching. Maybe she stopped watching. I hope she, let's just call her and say, okay. <laughs> I don't have her. You'd have okay, to call have her. her. You call her real yeah. quickly. Just <laughs> buzz me all. All right. Katie! <laughs> Is she mad that I call her Katie? Um... I have not heard from her since you called her Katie. I know, I know. She made it. If we can't lose her, we cannot lose mom. Oh, Jesus. What if she's ticked? It's, I mean, she's not picking up. So I know. She this might is be unique. mad. She saw her face on there, and she's not speaking to us. Lord, please let Katie answer. Come on, Kimberly. Kimberly. Kimberly Dawn. Kimberly Dawn. Oh, she doesn't like this anymore. 
thing. Oh, she's oh, she's sent us to the voicemail. <laughs> We're gonna have to try again though. Yeah, we'll try because now I'm nervous. Oh, there oh, she is. She's calling back. Yes. Good, good answer. Mm-hmm. Mm, I love her. Hey, mom. Dad's phone ringing. Oh. <laughs> Dumb. Hey mom, it's me again. Okay. It's it's your other son. <laughs> um, we Ryan and I wanted to know: Are you mad at us because we highlighted you all week long in the Bible reading? Your face is all over Bible reading now, and we wanted to know: Are you mad at us? I don't know. Well, I haven't gotten to Monday's episode yet. So. Oh well, good. So right now you're still happy. <laughs> Great. We're gonna go ahead and hang up. As long as you're happy, goodbye. We'll talk to you later this week. We'll need you, I'm sure. You should call, okay, I'll call me in twenty minutes when I'm done then. Okay, All in right. twenty minutes. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Oh gosh, what if she doesn't like it? We just better read the Bible now. So let's just jump in because she could be mad. We lose her. We lose everybody. So let's just jump right in. Psalm 21, 22, all week long. We're going to read the Psalm from 21 to 25. Excited about it. It is uh, 13 verses long. Let's jump right in on a Monday morning. Here we go. How the king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. He shouts with joy because you give him victory. For you have given him his heart's desire. You have withheld nothing he requested. You welcomed him back with success and prosperity. You placed a crown of finest gold on his head. He asked you to preserve his life, and you granted him his request. The days of his life stretch on forever. Your victory brings him great honor, and you have clothed him with splendor and majesty. You have endowed him with eternal blessings and given him the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. The unfailing love of the Most High will keep him from stumbling. You can capture all your enemies. Your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. You will throw them in a flaming furnace when you appear. The Lord will consume them in his anger. Fire will devour them. You will wipe their children from the face of the earth, for they will never have descendants. Although they plot against you, their evil schemes will never succeed, for they will turn and run when they see your arrows aimed at them. Rise up, O Lord, in all your power with music and singing, and celebrate your mighty acts. That's good stuff. Yeah, I love it. angry. I know. I just I never can figure him out, right? <laughs> Everybody's like, hey, he's, he's a man after God's own heart. And he's just ticked all the time. <laughs> all the time. He is all the time ticked. <laughs> yes. And yet he has multiple wives, so maybe mm-hmm. they're ticking him off. Maybe. Because he's married to more than one because he's a king. He has a harem of women. Maybe that's it. Maybe he's just <laughs> tense all the time. Yeah. Got to keep them all happy. Right. And I don't know. Yeah. But he's mad all he the time. <laughs> and he's not mad like, Lord, bless him. He's mad like, just kill him. Burn him up in burn, the furnace. Burn him up in the furnace. Here's what I want to ask you, though, Okay, uh, that stuck out to me. It says in verse number six, you have endowed him with eternal blessings and given him the joy of your presence. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me how you know. We hear this a lot in Christianity. Oh, I could just feel the presence of God, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're in a worship set. Oh, man, you could feel God or God's presence was here or when we pray, mm-hmm. right? Lord, we just ask that your presence would come and consume us and be here. You know, we're two or three are gathered. How do you know? Uh, this invisible God, this is spirit in your walk, how do you know his presence is in the room? I guess for me, it's I feel at peace. Okay. That the anxiety and the stress of life just kind of melt away. And then my focus, my mind just gets super focused okay. on, on the things of God. So you see visible change then, like an internal change. Yeah. Like, so it would make you go, this the presence of God is in the room. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's, you said peace and what? And focus. And focus. Yeah. Mm, that's good. Anytime you look back over your life where you say, oh, I, will, I can definitely go back to a point where I know the presence of God showed up. Uh, yeah, probably when I was 14 years old. All right, what happened? And uh, we were at a summer camp, and um, I'd really just gotten saved, uh, like, uh, just gotten saved. And so I'd never really experienced speaking in tongues or slain in the spirit. I didn't even know it existed. didn't know what it was. And kids were being prayed for, and they're just falling down backwards. I was like, oh, that's weird. Mm-hmm. And so the guy explained that's the power of God, and people started speaking in tongues, explaining that's the power of God. And I said, oh, I want that. Mm-hmm. So I just began to seek God. I never fell backwards. I never began to speak in tongues in that moment. But I was just really hungry. I was like, God, I want you to show up for me. Yeah. Um, And so... 
I just kept praying. And then um, to make a long story short, um, three guys at three different points that were youth pastors that didn't know me, I didn't know them, came and prophesied basically the same thing, that I was going to one day be a youth pastor and minister and, mm. and preach to the next generation in a creative way. And then ever since that moment, that's kind of what I, my life's journey has been, is, is to accomplish that. So i got a mission. question for you. I've been in ministry 30 years, pastoring for a little over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And without fail, this, this, this was said years ago, which made me think, a guy was kind of anti, I don't know if he was anti or he was just really challenging this whole, oh, God's in the room presence thing. And he jumped up. He said, God ain't in the room. Mm -hmm. He said, you all sitting there saying God's in the room with that. He said, that wasn't God in the room. That was a C-sharp minor seven with a suspended fourth. <laughs> right. And then he kind of went on a rant of how he can manipulate people because he was a musician. He can manipulate people through music. Mm -hmm. He can set moods through music. Well, that kind of makes you skeptical. Like, well, what if it's not God? What if it's just the mood in the room or right. the the proper, uh, you know, mm -hmm. chord progression. And that chord progression makes me emotional. Uh, example, I was riding into work today, listening to a song and I got about a 25 minute ride in, right? So I'm 25 minutes coming into coming here and crying the whole time mm -hmm. because I, I put a song on right. from the moment the song started till the time the song in, I cried like a baby yeah. and would say to people, I could feel the presence of God in the car with me and somebody else could say, man, dude, that wasn't God. That was, that was just song, that song touched you. So how, how do you explain to people it's God versus no, it's just a chord progression or just a, uh, I can get emotional, listen to rock and roll music, a love song, just as easy as I could get emotional, listen to a Christian song. How would you explain to a young person or somebody questioning the difference between man that song moved me and i cried you know it was uh, boston or mm -hmm. my day journey something yeah. like that versus yeah. uh no this is the presence of god how do you define that to people so that it's maybe sometimes it is just emotions mm -hmm. but how do you balance that was just emotions versus i thought that was god yeah i guess the real question is then what is the end goal is the end goal to say, well, look at me and how spiritual I am? Or is the end goal to say, well, I'm just trying to get closer to God. I'm trying to be more like God because didn't God create me and my emotions? And didn't he, is that same creator also create music and musical tones? And mm -hmm. so he knew how they would mm -hmm. correlate with each other. Mm -hmm. And so I think if the end goal is to say, well, gosh, my pedestal of how holy and righteous and mm -hmm. great I am because I felt God versus, no, I really felt God, and I want to try to inspire you to, and I'm just trying to get closer to him. I think I think that's the difference. What is the end goal? Yeah, that's good. I like that. I think that's true for me, too. I mean, you if you tell me you listen to a song and I listen to a song and you go, God showed up and I'm like, dude, I didn't even like that tune. Mm -hmm. That's really weird. And we do that in church yeah, anyway. Right. Oh, God was here today. It's the worst mm -hmm. sermon I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And it's the same message or the same song. And we have such a wide variety that it, it either is emotional or some people really tune into God differently than others through music or right. through preaching. And I think you're right. I think the end goal is a life change. Right. I, think, I think the end goal is peace. Mm -hmm. I think the end goal is something uh, here's how i would define it I, I became more aware of god right 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 exactly like i became more aware of god not just crying riding yeah, down right. the road going man dude what a great song but it made me more aware of his character and his nature and so that's right. kind of the way i do it it just is life changed like at the end goal and then in some way when i say man the presence of god was in the room it's an awareness that opens up. Yes. You know, you're sitting here one minute, next minute you're sobbing, thinking about how broken you are and how great he is. And so that's kind of the way to do it. Thank you so much, man. We'll see you tomorrow on Tuesday. Come back, Psalm chapter 22.